This tale takes place in September 1920 in West Clare in Ireland, in what was then a dominion of the British Empire, while a rugged, beautiful part, part of the world, West Clare had a troubled past. Poor land, proud people, and a great yearning for change. Ireland had had many revolutions during the British rule, yet this one, the War of Independence, was, was different for one notable feature. The distinction was in whom was leading the rebellion. The leaders were not Celtic chieftains or Anglo-Irish nobility. Bishops or people of power. They were tenant farmers, housewives, shopkeepers, factory workers, nurses, and even former soldiers. Capable, hardworking, some shy, some outgoing, and some surprised to be even in the battle. They were not without flaws, yet they burned inside with a sense of criminal injustice, and more importantly, a bold imagination that they could make a real difference in the narrative, the history, and the future of their homeland. West Clare in 1920 was recovering from a land war, many famines, World War I, and a cruel government. Yet, two days in September, Wednesday the 22nd and Thursday the 23rd of, of September, were to be as significant as all the other events combined for the area of West Clare. And so it began with a brutal murder. That evening, an eerie calm befell the town of Venstein. Military trucks were heard being loaded up, and there were reports that many of the soldiers based in Ennestimen had been drinking heavily all afternoon. The rumour was that the British forces were getting ready to attack the village of Milltown Malibu. The rumour was half right. They were going to attack Milltown Malibu. But first, they were going to destroy Ennis Tymon. Soldiers stationed at the Ennis Tymon workhouse drove into town with incendiary devices, along with cans of petrol, and the purpose to burn out any known IRA members. Their families and Sinn Shin Féin sympathisers living in the town. At 9pm, the attack began. The first place they born was the Town Hall in Parliament Street. The irony was that the Crown forces didn't have to travel, didn't have to travel as the Town Hall was right next to the RIC barracks. It continued with the burning of houses and business in Parliament and in the main street. Smoke, screams, running babies crying. Gunshots fill the air. <laughs> it continued with the, with the butter. Uh, people rushed out to see the blaze from the fire. One man, the tailor, John Whelan and his wife, walked up the hill and was horrified when he looked back to see that his own house was on fire. Hello, it's your man and the house is on fire. I know what I need to do. What are we going to do? Where are you? screamed a soldier. Come out and fight you, IRA cunts! People fled the, fled the village. Many weren't able to. The soldiers attacked places where they believed IRA members to be working or living. Mr. Tom Canole, the secretary the, of, of the Irish Transport and General Workers Union's house was surrounded. They broke down his door, arrested him, tying his feet and hands. He was then shot in the head by the IRIC officers. In front of his family, while burning the house down. Then they threw his body into the burning building. In the morning, all that could be found upon old Tom 
was part of a blood-stained skull. The black and tans broke into Flanagan's shop, stealing a good amount of liquor. Then they set about to burn the shop, where Susan Flanagan was walking. Don't burn down the shop, the invalid sisters is upstairs. I don't give a toss about your invalid sister. I don't care if you're five of them upstairs. Susan Flanagan had to drag her sister out of the house on her back as it began to burn the shop down. Then they went from door to door to houses, giving the occupants seven minutes in which to leave before they destroyed their homes. Some officers made attempts to put out the fires. By now, the town, a born in cauldron. The soldiers began driving out of town when they came across a 15-year-old te teenager, PJ Lennon, who had been sent by his mother to warn his grandmother that her house could be in danger of being burnt. He shot poor PJ four times. His body was not discovered till early the next morning. With that, they travelled to the hinge. They had more fire and fury and terror to bring to West Clare that night. <laughs>